So I went down a gym in Loudon Grange, a prison gym, and there was a, an inmate that was a was a little bit overweight. And when you're in prison, you only get limited to a certain amount of gym sessions per week. So you get free, right, per wing. And I went down there, and, and the reason they do that is because you can't cross wings. So Because there's a lot of separation in prison because of gangs. Uh. So once they know you're on that wing, there's no fighting. They know that's a safe wing. But if you mix wings together, you might get one gang there, one gang there, they start fighting. So they keep you segregated. But every time I went down the gym, this, this guy, Mickey, was on this rowing machine, and he had gym like seven days a week. And I went up to him and I asked him, I said, how comes you've got so much gym? And he said, I'm raising um, some money for a children's hospice. And he said, if you say to the prison officers, you want to do that, they'll let you come down and they'll let you sort of come down in seven days a week. So I asked, they, they said yes. And I went and got some sponsorship of some of the inmates on the wing. They sponsored me a pound, 50 pence, and it's for a children's hospice in, in Nottingham. And I gave the sponsorship form to the, uh, the head of the PE department, Craig, and he said, right, bang, there you go. Gave me the note. Then that was that allowed me to walk off the wing and go down to the gym. So I was 26 years old at this point. I got on the RAM machine for the first time. I didn't know what I was doing. But I went through I went through a process where events happened in my life where I wanted to get out of prison. And and I and I often use this analogy that I come to that point in my life where I didn't want to be a criminal anymore. And I wanted to change the direction of my life, mm. but I was trapped. I was physically trapped. Like, I believe everyone in life has choice. We, you have choice. You you can get up. If, if you didn't like me now, you can get up and walk out of the room. We have choice. And and again, it felt to me, it's like being a crack addict, locked in a crack den, and not being able to escape, but you're trying to get off drugs. Mm. So I was like that. I wanted to turn my life around. I wanted to change the direction of my life, but I'm stuck in prison around what I would class as being very negative. I feel people. like this is something you can only realise retrospectively. I don't think you at no, the no. time can term it in no. that way. I, no, no, no. What I did do when I was, there was a conversation that happened when an event in my life happened in prison, which we can go back to in a minute. And the next following morning, I was seeing a communal eating area and these guys were talking about when they got out of prison, they were going to, they were going to, they were going to do this. This person was a police informer. They wanted to stab this person out. And I thought, I cannot be around these people no yeah. more. I cannot listen to this stuff no more. And then I went down to the gym and I got in the RAM machine. And when I first got in that RAM machine at 26 years old, I remember looking at those numbers on that screen and everyone left me alone for two hours. No one even spoke to me. Prison officers, prisoners. And I was, I, it transcended me out of prison. It literally transcended me out of prison. Obviously, I didn't realise about endorphins and make, feeling good through physical activity. But at that moment in time, I just felt amazing. Like it was like I went through this process. It was like I could have been anywhere in the world. I could have been round across the Atlantic. I could have been. A, I could have been in a gym somewhere in the country. Ran. I was not in prison. Hmm. And then what I'd done, this become then a habit. And then the next day I went down again, rode twenty miles. And the next day I rode down twenty miles. So I rode the first million meters for this hospice in a month. And then I thought, if I keep doing this every month, this is going to help me deal with the rest of my prison sentence until I get released. So I asked the prison officer if I could run another million. He said yes. And then I rode another million, three months. And then one day a prisoner said to me, by chance, he went, you do realise five million metres is 5,000 K and that's equivalent from rowing from Britain to the United States of America across the Atlantic. And I thought it was quite a cool thing to say yeah. I'd achieve something. So I asked Craig, the prison officer, if I could do it again, who headed up the PP department. And, and he agreed. He said, yep, yeah, just keep raising money. And I, I deeply believe in destiny. And I think in life, things happen for a reason. And one day, um, there was this incredible human being that, that changed my life forever called Darren Davis. Was a, he was a prison officer. And I was on this RAM machine in this gym in Nottingham as a prisoner. And he walked behind me one day and he looked over my shoulder. And just as I'd finished the workout, the screen froze. So it tells you how far you've rode and how quick. And he went, my God, you are quick. And, and, and I went, yeah, really. And again, you're in your prison. You're in this little bubble. It's it's not reality. It's a it's a constructed environment in which you're placed in. I didn't have any comprehension of what was good and what was bad. I'd never been around athletes in my life. I, I, I basically served nearly my whole adult life in a prison. And he went away and he came back a couple of days later when I was in the prison gym, and he literally handed me all these sheets of A4 paper, and they had all these world and British records. So he went, Darren went and checked it yeah, all out. Done it all for me. Did all the research. She must have just thought, bloody, yeah, that's quick. It's quick. And then he he come and gave me the paper. With, with all these records on. And I remember, Russell, I looked at them 
And I was like, they can't be real. But by I, then you'd done like five million. I'd done, I'd done about four, just over four million meters. But what would that, what I'd have, what Plus I'd you'd done, been doing them burpees. Burpees in the cell. And what I'd done that I didn't even intentionally realize to do, I had basically woken up this ability in my body that I didn't even know I had since I was a kid. Like I was absolutely shit at PE at school. Like I would, and I'm not, I'm not judging you. I'll show you a picture after this podcast finishes. I was probably- Hand it on your phone. Um, what oh, was your yeah, chubby? I was pretty chubby. <laughs> I've got a photo oh. of me, but then I haven't got on to break any world records for rowing, <laughs> so it's less impressive. And I, I was, I was just. Uh, if you went back to my PE teachers now, I was probably, I'd probably been ranked as one of the worst. No athletes good at like if you had to do cross country run no, or long distance. Not in the football team. No, no I, if I was a chubby kid that get put in goal. I, would, I was literally yeah, that bad at, at, <laughs> at sport. And and I had woken up this ability in that prison gym, and Darren had spotted it. And then when he gave me those pieces of paper, I remember going back to my cell. And it, it it kind of planted a seed in my head. And I thought, do you know what? I'm going to ask him if I can try to do one of these records. And I asked him. So he goes, so Darren, what's his name? Darren Davis. Darren Davis. He share, he comes back and he goes, look, this is the, what, what are the records that he brought back on them bits of paper? So they were, so basically it was every record from one kilometre all the way up to the longest continuous row. And when you were looking at them, did you think, <coughs> well, I can do some of these. I could already break through. You I could, already I could were already doing them. I was, all, I, but I didn't realise. That's why when I, I laughed because I said, they can't be real. Because I, I was breaking them. Like, I could break them at that moment. And and anyway, I asked... Which them, ones could you break? Uh, the, the the marathon, I was like... I was it's marathon 26 miles like with 26 running. 26 miles, exactly the same. So it was it was already like touch and go. I knew, I knew basically but by rowing the 20k, or the, the, sorry, by rowing the 32k, which was 20 miles, I already knew that I was already on pace to break that whole marathon. Because obviously I was rowing that distance nearly every single day. So because I was rowing it, I knew the splits that I needed to hold to just continue the extra sort of... Uh, the extra six miles and the the one kilometer and the 10,000 meters. And, and he then, I asked him if I could do it. He went away. And again, there was a, there was a governor of the prison called Gareth Sands. Gareth Sands was, was a deeply Christian man. And I didn't, I wasn't, I wasn't like privy to this conversation. It was only afterwards that Darren had this conversation with him. Darren said, look, there's his prisoner, John McAvoy. I d- I truly believe if we allow him the opportunity to try to do these records, it could be the thing that changes his life. And Gareth said, yeah, he can do it. So then Darren went away to the people that officiate the records. He explained the situation, me being a prisoner and being a prison officer. He explained- Who officiates the records then? So it would. So normally you would have to do it in a public environment where it was witnessed or do it in a competition. So again, in a public environment. And obviously I couldn't do either. So I couldn't do it in a public setting. So Darren explained that to them. They said, as long as I had two independent verifying witnesses, which would be prison officers that would sit with me and watch me do it and just sign, obviously, to say I've done it and that I was doing it as a lightweight man, so under 75 kilo. So they had to weigh me, take a photograph of me on the scales to then send all that information off and then they would verify the record. What's the significance of your weight? Is there there's different categories like yeah, boxing or something? Yeah, yeah. It's just normally rowing, it's light and heavy. Mm. So anything under 75 kilos as a, as a male, you're lightweight. Anything over it's just your heavyweight. Mm. Um, and then the disparity in power output is massive. We've had 16 stone man in, in relation to me being 11 stone. They've got uh. more strength. And the first record I attempted to break was for the marathon. And I remember I had to um, use sort of um, uh, sugar granules. Do you know like pure gr- sugar granules because I couldn't have energy gels because I was, I was in prison. <laughs> so we had to put them in my bean bottles and stuff and, and we'd, I, I would eat them and drink them as I was going through this road to get energy in me. Um, and Darren started to sort of teach me a little bit about sports nutrition. Anyway, well, I broke the first record for the marathon by seven minutes. And, and this off. And this was what the most broke profound by moment... by seven minutes. This was the most profound moment, Russell, was I remember when I broke that record... What I realised at that moment, what I'd gone back to when I was a kid about my legacy and about achieving something in my life, I always made that connection between that and money. And I thought that is what legacy and achievement was. It was all just money. It was all about goods and about making lots of money. And the more money you had, that was what your worth was in the world. That was, your, that, was the, that was the indication of your success. When I broke that record, everything I'd ever wanted as a kid to have, I felt it in that moment breaking that record. That not being average, the achieving something, the doing something that not a lot of other people could do, and and it made me feel amazing. And it and it like want to cry? Did it make you? It did. It was quite emotional. It was quite emotional. When I, when I look back on it now, it was it, it was it, it was just feeling amazing. You like I fe- connected your essence. I just felt amazing. I felt amazing. It, fe- it felt like I found something I was genuinely good at. That's and, I, and and I feel like as well, 
because again it does have an effect on you when 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 i realized when i wanted to change the trajectory of my life i looked at my life and i i hadn't achieved anything with what that little boy wanted to do is eight years old i was losing on an unimaginable scale in prison i was selfish i was consumed by greed mm. that was my existence up to 26 years old and then i wanted to put amends to that and i wanted to sort of achieve something positive in my life and then and when i found out like, i was good at sport i thought that would be the thing to to make me feel like that yeah well what tell me uh, what was just this, this do the brass tax a little bit what was the record previously like that you uh, it was so i did two hours and 32 minutes and i think it was originally something like two hours and two hours and 38 30. minutes amazing so like you and Darren are in there and that moment happens, <coughs> you're finishing it, it's 2.32. Mm. So tell me what happens after you've done that. What's... So then um, that then really planted the seed and my dream for the that people, moment. That, 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 you've got to go in the record books now, right? Yeah, now, it's, all, it's all online now. and stuff, yeah, it's all there. Is it still your record? It, the marathon is, yeah, the British record. I've sadly lost all the world records though. They've all been taken over the years. Like one of them, um, I set one world record for the long, for, sorry, the most amount of distance rode in 24 hours. And I rode 263 and a half thousand meters in 24 hours. Wow. And, he, and a young guy at Harvard University, um, he broke it by 120 something meters. It was literally like two strokes oh. on a rowing machine over 24 hours. And I, and, and I was reading all the blogs and stuff that they posted about it. And he went well in front of me at halfway. So he really, like, he was decimating my record. And then he exponentially slowed down the second half. So the last 12 hours, but he obviously had the number to chase. So he knew what my yeah. time was. Plus he's doing it in Harvard. Yeah, he was probably, doing he's that. probably on an IV he trip. Was, They're putting was. him full of all sorts of vitamins. Do, do you know what? I was I was watching because they put all pictures up of it and he had this massive industrial fan there and he had all gels <laughs> and Gatorade and stuff. Oh, and doing I, it with Darren yeah. behind the yeah. door. Yeah, in, in, in Loudon Grange. But what that then did, that then sparked the, the dream of being an athlete. Thanks for watching this podcast and going all the way to the end of it. Would you be so kind as to click the bell? It might not be there, it could be over there. And uh, subscribing so that we can infiltrate your serenity and peace of mind with jangling bells and buzzes. Thank you.